the deep stream SDK on a Jetson Xavier machine. So let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, DeepStream SDK is sort of the um, NVIDIA's application framework for managing streams, uh, video streams, and things of that nature, and taking those streams and doing uh, specific uh, processing on it. So for example, the most popular application is object detection. So you could, you could basically have um, a video stream, whether it be a stream from a camera, or a, or mp4 file or something of of some some source of video that's coming in whether it be one stream or several streams and then you could have um you know some artificial intelligence done so that you could detect uh the objects in in the um in the in the stream so whether it be a car or a pedestrian a street sign um a dog things of that nature that's that's what the deep stream sdk framework is able to do it's able to take in streams uh do some artificial intelligence neural network processing things of that nature and then to to output a stream that that is enhanced in some way okay so um the you use this they use this the examples they give is for example in a um in a, a street parking situation like a parking garage or um things of that nature right so uh, autonomous driving you could you could um use it in autonomous driving so that the car knows if it sees a pedestrian if it sees a street sign etc now the jetson xavier is a separate piece of hardware it's a specialized piece of hardware that runs the deep stream sdk and you could embed the Jetson Xavier it's sort of an embedded uh, machine ideally and you could embed it in a robot you could embed it in a drone you could embed it in a in a car and it will um, do the the heavy loading and the, the heavy processing that's necessary it's a specialized piece of hardware but it it does a lot in terms of um, uh, processing it does it very efficiently um, and it's coming from Nvidia so you know it's 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 powerful so anyway um to interface with the jetson xavier especially to set it up and everything you do need a, a host machine and a host machine is just a completely separate machine that you you use to interface with the jetson initially at least so um you know for most people you could have a windows computer a mac computer or what have you but what you need to do is create a partition on the computer and uh have it running ubuntu 18.4 lts that is the operating system that uh the jetson can interface with and all that good stuff so uh natively install it do a partition don't try to do a vm um, and also, ideally, you want it to be on a computer that does not have um, an NVIDIA GPU on it. So the host machine, you don't want to have an NVIDIA GPU on it. I have a whole separate video. My previous video talks about the problems I've been having when I tried to run Ubuntu on a, on a machine that had an NVIDIA GPU. I get a hardware error, and you could search for the hardware error here to search hardware error, and you will see what I'm talking about. I, I uh, talk about it and I have a video about it and all that stuff. The device, of course, is the Jetson Xavier device, and this is a piece of hardware that runs the DeepStream SDK. Okay, so um, all you do is you s you Google NVIDIA DeepStream SDK. So Google NVIDIA Deep DeepStream SDK, and then you're going to download the SDK itself, and you're going to download the documentation. It's important to download the documentation because uh, once you download it and extract it, you are going to, of course, you have to extract this too, but you extract this and you extract the documentation. And you're going to, in the um, documentation, you're going to have a quick start guide. And the quick start guide is um, it's like this. It's this button here. So it's a .html file. It's a website. And once you open it up, you'll see something about a quick start guide. And that will help you to... Um, to get started i'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's pretty self-explanatory make sure you have all the prerequisites done um you could go to this this post here and if you go just look at this video he kind of walks you through how to get the jetpack running but you could also you know listen to what i have to say this this was a post where i was trying to run it um, uh, Ubuntu on a virtual machine and it was creating a lot of problems but you can um, watch this video and, and this guy Jetson Hacks will walk you through how to to do all that okay so um, right so then you have the um, 
make sure you have the prerequisites installed and follow the quick start guide just be careful and mindful of where the command should run so some of the commands are you run on the host machine and then after that you transfer a file over to the Jetson Xavier and then you maybe run some more commands on the Jetson Xavier so you want to install the necessary software on the host machine create a file and then transfer the file over um, the quick start guide says that the file name is some specific file name but it's actually different from the one that comes from the DeepStream SDK the quick start guide is in a draft uh, draft sort of um, mode or it's in a, in a draft status so everything isn't finalized and the file name that they mention is different from the one that you actually use but it's going to be pretty obvious which file name so you you scp over the file to the jetson xavier in my case i had to email it to myself and opening up and and download the the file on the jetson xavier because i wasn't too familiar with the scp command at the time it may or may not work for you either way you just get it over to the jetson xavier and you you do what you need to do on the Jetson Xavier based on the quick start guide and then you run the application command and you should um, you know you, you run the sample application command with the config file and then you should be able to see the video so I'm going to actually run this file and show you okay so here I am on the um, Jetson SDK on Jetson samples configs deep stream dash app and then i'm in this folder and you notice it has this file the source 4 and the source 30 so what you do is you open a terminal within this folder of course it's going to um it's it's going to open up in that directory and then so then what you do is you just um you run uh, deep stream dash app dash C and then you drag this file into after the dash C you drag this file into the uh, terminal and you will get this portion right here in quotation marks right all of this and then what you do you press enter and then you run the application and you will see what happens so um, just give me a second. So when I run the application, I get this guy. Okay? And as you can see, it's um it's uh running running uh the video, four streams of it and it's detecting people so if i go into a particular stream it it shows what's going on it detects the cars all that good stuff so you could uh press p to pause press r to resume p to pause r to resume and then you could uh left click into a particular stream uh right click to get back to the the whole thing and then press P and R again, P and R. Okay? And that's pretty much your sample app. Okay? So now, what you can also do is after DeepStream dash app dash C, you could also run the other file. And when you do that, you, you, you drag the other file. And when you do that, you're going to get something slightly different. So in this case, now we're running uh, several more streams. Okay? And we could still go into a specific stream. We could still do pause and resume. Um, we could still left click to get back out, right click to get into a particular stream. So think if you had a parking garage or something and you had multiple cameras, you could just stream it all onto, onto, um, onto your system and, and monitor them at the same time and see all the things. Here, of course, we're just doing, um, you know, replicating one stream. But, of course, you can do um, several different things. So if you exit out of it, and then it, it just goes back. Now, um, the these files here are sort of the configuration files. So they sort of tell 
outside of all the other things that you have to do these files kind of tell DeepStream how you want to process the information right so um, you know of course we saw one of them was just four and then the other one I guess was what 30 30 streams or so so it, it sort of dictates it has all the settings for how you want to to to, to have things done um, when you open up this file I'm not gonna open it up because it's sort of you know proprietary and all that but when you open up the file there is a tiled display setting um, that you will see tiled dash display and there's an em enabling uh, parameter which is set to one you could set it to zero and if you set it to zero it, it won't tile and tile just means multiple streams in, in in the in the window you could also set the width and height of the stream and that will you know that will basically dictate the width and height. Uh, there's also a source zero, and um, that basically just tells um, DeepStream or what have you what where where to get the stream from. So the stream could be a camera. The stream could be a .mp4 file that you have on your computer. It could be um, you know some other some other stream it's getting off of the network from another computer or something of that nature uh, there's also a num dash sources parameter which um, is set to four but you could set it to three or two or one um, in this case it would be I guess you know whatever it is uh, notice though that when you change the num sources to like less than what what the default was in the in the uh, in the in the file it, it will give you less streams but it will make those streams like move faster I don't know it will be like on a, on a speed up thing um, there's also a parameters called sync and there's sync 0 sync 1 and sync 2 when you open up the file you will see it and um, a sync basically from what I understand it's just a it's a destination device so it's 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 a device that's receiving information off of um, you know off of from somewhere else so um so for example the display window that you saw that's uh that's considered a sync and i think that's sync zero in the settings and um you know it it basically r receives r receives the, the the output of deepstream sdk and you could there's specific settings that you could um do with that uh, there's also a sync one and what sync one does is that that takes the content that you see in the display window and it pushes it to a, an output file so it's like out.mp4 and what that does is that um, basically saves everything that you see on the display window to an mp4 file and you could play that mp4 file after the fact replay it or what have you you want to do with it and then there's a sync two which um, not too familiar with but the sync 2 they have it set up so that that basically streams the 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 final output to uh, another place so it might stream it to another computer it might stream it to a, a, a television I don't know but it's that's what sync 2 is uh, there are more settings in this file here but I don't um, you know I haven't played with it yet but I will and once I do I'll create another video so um but that's pretty much it so you should uh between all of what's been discussed here you should be able to um get everything going so um guys uh please uh donate to the cause using this link right here it takes a lot of time and energy to get this stuff done um help those that help you um also subscribe to this youtube channel um, and also comment below subscribe ring the bell comment below tell your friends about CUDA education CUDA education is um, is uh, like just the greatest website ever and it has information on Jetson Xavier on CUDA processing on um, TensorFlow artificial intelligence all that good stuff there are tutorials there are video there's code for you to run um, so you understand here is a link to the YouTube video um, there is um, all kinds of archives there there's categories here 
where you could do like just stuff related to Jetson Xavier, just stuff related to CUDA, just stuff related to installation. That's a big one. TensorFlow tutorials. And then there's also, you know, I also have a section here for install guides. I'll, I guess I'll have to add um, DeepStream SDK to this. But um, yeah, now also uh, please note that you must use these instructions at your own risk. This code and or instructions are for teaching purposes only. CUDA Education or Nicholas Main does not guarantee the accuracy of this code in any way. The code and instruction on this site may cause hardware damage and or instability in your system. This code and or instruction should not be used in a production or commercial environment. Any liabilities or loss resulting from the use of this code and or instructions in whole or in part will not be the responsibility of CUDA Education or Nicholas Main. All rights reserved. This code is prior property of CUDA Education and Nicholas Main. Please contact CUDA Education at kudaeducation at gmail.com if you would like to use this code in any way, shape, or form. So that's just basically saying that um, I'm not liable if anything happens to your machine uh, based on the code or the instructions or anything like that. Also, if you are interested in um, if you are interested in um, a teaching engagement, a consulting engagement, uh, please email kudaeducation at gmail.com and you will um, you know we could work something out where I teach your organization how to use this stuff how to, to uh, get up and running it say it would save you a lot of time instead of you know having your staff there trying to figure it out yourself or if you're running a school um, you know I could sort of get get you guys up and running uh, much faster than maybe you normally would so uh, email kudaeducation at gmail.com if you're interested in um, having some sort of teaching or consulting engagement all right guys uh, please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, comment below thank you guys for watching I hope you um, <coughs> you get deep stream up and running on your system um, I I can't vouch for I don't know if you could run deep G deep stream SDK just on a a regular GPU that you have on your you know on your desktop or laptop computer um, from last I heard Nvidia doesn't really support it and it, they, they of course they don't you know they, they don't promote that they they kind of say run this on the Xavier or run this on like some kind of Tesla Tesla setup machine so I don't know if like a GeForce will work with the deep stream or anything like that and I can't vouch for it so um, you know that's you're on your own with that but yeah uh, definitely check out Kuda Education um, you'll get all the information you need alright thanks for watching